Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, congratulations. Uh, Well-deserved uh, honor here. Uh, you have worked hard all your life, and um, you have much to be proud of. I have said in the past, and I think it's good for the court to look like America, so count me in on the idea of making the court more diverse. And in the history of our country, we've never had an African-American woman serve on the court. But I also said that didn't get much coverage. I want, I, want the, I want the court to play a particular role in America. One is make it more look like the country, but also make it operate in the confines of the Constitution. That didn't, didn't get a lot of coverage. Um, so the hearings are going to be challenging for you, informative for the public, and respectful by us. I hope we can meet that those criteria. Um, it won't be a circus. We're off to a good start. Uh, Chairman Grassley couldn't get the first word out of his mouth before they shut down the place, so that's off to a good start. Most of us couldn't go back to our offices during Kavanaugh without getting spit on. Hope that doesn't happen to y'all. I don't think it will. Uh, as to the historic nature of your appointment, I understand. But when I get lectured about this from my Democratic colleagues, I remember Janice Rogers Brown, an African-American woman. It was filibustered by the same people praising you. I remember, remember Miguel Estrada, one of the finest people I ever met, completely wiped out. Didn't make it through the uh, uh, gang of uh, 14, whatever gang I was in. I've been in so many, I can't remember. He, he didn't make the cut well-lived life just completely ruined. So if you're a Hispanic or African-American conservative, it's about your philosophy. Now it's going to be about the historic nature of the pick. And it's going to be about your philosophy. The bottom line here is when it is about philosophy, when it's somebody of color on our side, it's about we're all racist if we ask hard questions. It's not going to fly with us. We're used to it by now, at least I am. So it's not going to matter a bit to any of us. We're going to ask you what we think you need to be asked. And Senator Hawley, you need to ask her about her record as a uh, district court judge. You should. I hope you do. And we'll see what she says. Very fair game. Uh, now, President Biden had a choice here. And he has every right to make it. Elections have consequences. He had many qualified African-American women to choose from. He chose you. Michelle Childs, a district court judge from South Carolina, supported by Jim Clyburn. That was in the mix. I think it came down to about two, three, four people. Don't know for sure, but that's what the press was reporting. And uh, when it came to Judge Childs, uh, this Arabella group, Senator Whitehouse, you talk about dark money, you may be onto something. Uh, this Arabella group is funded by Source and some other liberal billionaire. They got so many groups within their group, I can't name them all now. But they basically said, if you, if you pick Childs, you may have a primary opponent. The FLCIO said Justice, Judge Child was a union buster. The attacks from the left against Judge Childs was really pretty vicious, to be honest with you. So you say, uh, Judge Jackson, you don't have any judicial philosophy per se. Well, somebody on the left believes you do. Or they wouldn't have spent the money they spent to have you in this chair. So we're going to find out how that statement holds up over time. A viewer's guide to this hearing. She will be asked about her sentencing practices as a uh, district court judge, and she'll have a chance to explain her reasoning, and you can make up for yourself what this means, but it's good to be asked. Uh, about her legal views, I'll ask her about the law of armed conflict and her view of the law of armed conflict. The fact that you represent a Gitmo detainees is not a problem with me. Everybody deserves a lawyer. You're doing their country a great service when you defend the most unpopular people. But I do want to know about your amicus briefs after you're no longer a defense counsel, weighing into the Supreme Court about how they decide law of war issues. That matters a lot to me. I think it does matter that the groups that came to your aid at the expense of Judge Childs, how, how did that happen and why were they doing what they were doing? What is it about your nomination 
that the most liberal people under the umbrella of Arabella threw in their money, their time, their support, and threatened uh, Joe Biden if he picked uh, Judge Childs. I want to know more about that. I want to know about your judicial philosophy because people on the left, the far extreme part of the left, believe that you were the best bet. And I want to know why they reached that conclusion. Maybe there's no explanation you can give us, but let, we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, when we say this is not Kavanaugh, what do we mean? It means that Democratic senators are not going to have their windows busted by groups. That's what it means. It means that no Republican senator is going to unleash on you an attack about your character when the hearing is virtually over. None of us, I hope, have been sitting on information about you as a person for weeks or months. You come into our offices and we never share it with you to allow you to give your side of the story. We wait to the very last minute when the hearing's about to be gavel concluded and say, oh, by the way, I've got this letter. And so happened that every media outlet in the country had the letter too. So the next morning, there were headlines all over the country, really, accusing Judge Kavanaugh of being basically Bill Cosby. None of us are going to do that to you. And if any of us does that to you, all hell will break out, and it should. The media will uh, be your biggest cheerleader. They're in your camp. They have every right to pick who they want to pick. They won't be this constant attack on you like Judge Kavanaugh and other conservative judicial appointments. They won't be any questioning of where you go to church, what kind of groups you're in in church, how you decide to raise your kids, what you believe in, how you believe in God. Nobody's going to do that to you. And that's a good thing. So you're the beneficiary of a lot. You're the beneficiary of Republican nominees having their life turned upside down. And it didn't work. So I am hoping that we can have a hearing that's respectful, that's informative, that's challenging. And President Biden has every right to pick who he'd like to pick. That comes with winning the White House. And I've been very inclined to support the picks of people that I would not have chosen. But this is a new game for the Supreme Court. And this game is particularly disturbing to me because there's been a wholesale effort of the left to take down a nominee from my state. And I uh, don't like it very much. And if that's the way the game's going to be played, then I'll have a response, and I don't expect it to be reward that way of playing the game. Justice Child, Judge Childs would have gotten 60-plus votes. There have been people in my caucus that would have voted for her, even though we knew she would be a reliable liberal vote, because I and Senator Scott would have stepped up. Now we're picked. Now we're facing a choice sponsored by the most radical elements of the Democratic Party when it comes to how to be a judge. They have the most radical view of what a judge should do, and you were their choice. And you will be asked, do you support expanding the Supreme Court? I hope you can give us an answer, because it shouldn't be hard. Either you do or you don't. Justice Ginsburg said no. She thought if you just changed the number of the court every time somebody new came in power, it would ruin the court in the eyes of the public and make it a joke over time. I agree with that. So I hope you can give us an answer to that question, because I think the court would be better off if the judges stood up for the court, if the judges told politicians, don't play this game with the court, because over time, nobody wins. So congratulations. It's going to be a couple interesting days, and we're off to a better start than we have been in the past. And the one thing I can promise you, you will not be vilified, you, won't, you will not be attacked for your religious views, you will not be accused of something that you could not defend yourself against until it was too late. Thank you.